Pamela Sneed. Pamela Sneed is a New York-based poet, writer, and actress. She is the author of Imagine Being More Afraid of Freedom Than, of, than Slavery, Kong and Other Works, and the chapbook Lincoln. She has performed at Lincoln Center, PS122, Ex Teresa, Mexico City, the ICA London, CCA Glasgow, BAM Cafe, Joe's Pub, the Public Theater, Central Park Summer Stage, Bronx Summer Stage, and the Whitney Museum. She is completing a collection of short stories, Anna May, for black women survivors, and has a forthcoming chapbook, Sweet Dreams. Please help me welcome Pamela Sneed. I feel a little overwhelmed. Um, or a lot overwhelmed. Um, shout out uh, Will Rawls uh, for Lost and Found, the dance space. Shout out School of the Art Institute, Chicago. Um, I want to thank um, Zoe, and I want to thank the High Line. And so I have like a lot of uh, responses. Um, hmm, so. I had just begun to relax, celebrate the marriage equality ruling. I had just begun feeling with Obama. I was watching Ali in trouble off the ropes, delivering to his opponents the rope-a-dope, my father's eyes, excitement. I was just beginning to breathe air, feel exhilarated at images of Joe Biden and President Obama running down halls of the White House with rainbow flags like boys with kites soaring. I was just beginning to forgive deaths of my brothers to AIDS, not forget there should still be tribunals for them and every woman abused by the medical system. I had just begun to turn a corner on Mike Brown, Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, the massacre at AME, not think of it all every day, and then the police killed this young black girl in custody in Texas, claimed she committed suicide, and I remember we're a war nation. In war times, I imagine how James Bayard Nina felt seeing a, a nation turn its dogs, teeth, gas, hoses, bullets on children, adults, humans. I can't stop thinking about Steve Biko, his battered face. They say he hung himself too, the world's outrage. Who will pray now for us, America? Um, and this is going to be an excerpt from a story um, called Mother Tongue. However, before I talk about shame and fear, I want to say how proud I am in my own neighborhood to see young bulldaggers, dykes, queer couples, unmistakably lovers who walk down streets, kiss and hold hands. How much has changed now, even in my own lifetime, whereas only yesterday these things were impossible. I would like to tell you about how my heart surged, the pride I felt seeing The Color Purple by Alice Walker on Broadway, and me and every single person in that theater row sobbing hysterically when Celia, as played by Fantasia, leans over to kiss Suge Avery, and realizing even in my own lifetime, in most modern times, I had rarely seen black people express love toward each other in a large form, and had never seen two black women publicly kiss outside of a bar setting. I experienced the same feeling of pride at my first lesbian wedding, and even though I'm not into weddings, I was touched deeply at watching two women able to openly celebrate love and realize the harm it can do to a person when all of their life they have to hide and have no means to celebrate their love and the importance of public acknowledgement. I think too about slaves and how everything, everything they loved was torn asunder and how the system separated and dehumanized them and said slaves had no capacity to love. 
And I want to tell you again about the pride and joy I felt the day I was with a woman watching her eight-year-old daughter play soccer. And afterwards, my lover's friend, uh, work friend approached and seeing something between us asked, oh, is she your sister? And my lover looked at her and answered, no, point blank, she's my lover. And she said this when it could have been just as easy to lie or to avoid the question. And in saying all of this, I know no matter where I go and how long and how far, my heart will always be queer. I realize now, though, when I look at the women's community in much the same way Martin Luther King once looked over a crowd gathered at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington at those who wanted and demand recognition under the law, who no longer wanted to remain separate and unequal like him, I too have a dream. Like something at the end of that film, Gladiator, where the slave becomes a great fighter and a defender of Rome, and at the end when the soldier lays dying, he envisions Rome's greatness, and then to go home to his family and rest, I too have a dream. Like unfreed slaves, those that worked the plantations died in sickness, childbirth, birth, infancy, field hands, sharecroppers, house niggas, I too have a dream like women suffragists fighting for rights to read, vote, work, leave the home. I have a dream like those Dahomey and Amazons poet Audre Lorde once spoke of so valiantly, those one-breasted warriors like turn-of-the-century abolitionists and educators. I have a dream. From Ouida to Benin to Ghana to Mississippi, from Selma to Alabama, Sierra Leone, Massachusetts, Robben Island, South Africa, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Cuba, Mexico, I have a dream with the spirit of my ancestors' bodies, blood disintegrated into waters off the Atlantic, off coast of the Caribbean, Allegra, Zerli, Shango, Oya. I call you in the name of Sakia Gunn, Matthew Shepard, Jorge, Stephen, Lopez, Mercado, Tyler McCle uh, Clemente, and those young gays slain in a nightclub in Orlando. I have a dream like those slain student, student civil rights workers spat at, kicked, maimed, ridiculed, scorned, left to die. I have a dream like the sons and daughters of immigrant workers. I have a dream like feminist poet Judy Grand once wrote, I believe in a circle, a gathering of women, a place where we love and protect and honor each other. I have a dream. Um, okay. Um, okay. I have to get my papers together here. Okay. Shit. <laughs> okay. Um, I am grateful that Zoe's artwork exists, and grateful to the High Line for posting it because I grew up in a world where even just a few decades ago, art like this displayed in, a public, in public was impossible. Being a dyke was a secret and considered shameful. Seeing and reading it, I have the same sensation and freedom I did of uh, when the city back in 2000 started posting subway signs and directions to the LGBTQ Pride Parade at 59th Street. And I remember a time before this when some of us had to sneak to the parade and carried our clothes in a bag and change downtown. And some of us were willing to w risk losing jobs, family, even death to experience who we were openly amongst our own people. Zoe's text acknowledges me as a dyke and a black woman and helps me to envision a future that I don't really exist in yet. It makes me feel a little nostalgic and teary as I, as I did the past, this past Gay Pride Month when the Chase Bank started posting pictures of a gay family on the ATM uh, home screens and said June is LGBTQ Pride Month. And seeing um, these affirming words and images in public about us still makes a great difference. 
Some young person may pass here and read Zoe's text, and some adult will feel acknowledged, and seeing it here will save somebody's life. I want a president who is not a president. Though, of course, on Tuesday, I am going to vote and vote as Audre Lorde once commanded, as if my life depends upon it, because it does. I want someone who doesn't believe, in, even symbolically, that one person uh, or one machine ro ruling over the masses is even remotely a democracy. I want someone who believes that people, given the proper tools and path of uh, accountability, can govern themselves. I want someone who believes everyone's voice should be heard and works to facilitate that. I want a president who is not a president, who knows that the system of health care and education is badly broken and needs repair. I want no more magic words, no more smoke machines, no more Botox fillers, no more offices, no more neighborhoods and businesses that, like toothpaste uh, brands, boast and brainwash us into believing in the amazing powers of white names. No, I want no more hunger games, privacy invasions, wars with countries we can't locate on maps, name one single food, street, or a national dish. I want a president who is not a president. He doesn't care about that stuff, or she doesn't care about that stuff, just wants to get the job done, isn't running uh, just to improve their cachet of success and accomplishments, isn't a narcissist, addict, megalomaniacal like Al Pacino's character in Scarface who just wants more, 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 isn't straight out of Shakespeare. I want a president who is not a president. I came of age in a time of war. During a time when the AIDS epidemic was rampant, when young people were dying in droves and people of color, they were poets, artists, people I wanted and expected to grow old with. But instead, as Allen Ginsberg describes in the first line of his epic howl, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed. And now I'm watching another epidemic through gun violence. I am uh, shouting the name of Terrence Coleman, shot on October 30th. He was a young black gay man who acted in the Boston Theater Offensive Troop, uh, True Colors. When his mother called uh, the EMTs uh, and police for assistance with Terrence's uh, mental health issues, the police shot him. This happened on October 30th, 2016, and we've never talked about the ongoing wars against women, rape, and misogyny. Oh, I want a president who is not a president. Thank you. Thank you.